Don't open Grinder or Scruff on a date. It's Are so you kidding? tacky! It is so tacky! Seriously? No, I'm, I am, it, it has happened a couple of times. Welcome to No Two Gays About It, the podcast for gay men over 50. I'm Tom Burke, and I haven't been on a date since 1987. That sounds like a you problem, and I am Michael <laughs> Foley, <laughs> here to say that. Fantastic. And what, you were on a date last night, I'm sure? Um, well, define date. Okay, that's what we're going to do later. Um, okay. <laughs> so, before we get into dating, and Michael is going to have to lead us through this, because Michael is the guy who's out there dating... This season, we've been talking about relationships, and what better thing to discuss among relationships than how a relationship starts, and that's dating. So let's go, Michael. (laughs) Dating. Uh, Dating. Hmm. Hmm. Well, first of all, thank you for doing, as anyone who listens knows, I love a good list, and I love some good statistics. And while I was away, Michael got me some of those. And so let's just start with that, because it, I was a little shocked. Um, I was also a little shocked of where the study came from. You know, it used to be like studying GQ or yeah. studying whatever. Or The Advocate or what, like Frontiers yeah. or something. This, yeah. But we have gotten to this point in life. The study is from AARP. <laughs> oh, my God. Aww, oh, Grandpa. Yeah. Um, all right. So this study said um, 57% of gay men over 45 reported being single. That's a lot of single guys out there. It's a lot of single guys. 57%. I know we are living in this little bubble here in Palm Springs, and it seems, at least to me, that everybody is in a couple. Everyone is either married or... I don't know if you're finding that as well out there. Um, Probably not as so much as I am, because I'm married, and so... Oh, no, I find it. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Uh, and, but though, even when we were living uh, in Los Angeles, I think it was just our circles were just all coupled or married uh, gay men. So this 57% means there's a lot of people out there. Not all of them date, but that's a lot of dating going on. It is, but not in Palm Springs. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, because you're right. There are a ton of couples here. Yeah. And... A lot of them have open relationships, which is just not a playground I choose to get on the seesaw in. Yeah, on. yeah, um, I, I would imagine I just, that would be so messy. Yeah, because it's like you know what I want mine. Like, yeah, it, it's challenging enough, and I believe it or not, still believe in monogamy. So we were at a fundraiser a couple of weeks ago, and. Uh, we're introduced to this couple. And then, of course, when they leave, everyone's like whispering and telling the real stories about who they were. So they were in a throuple. And the one guy didn't really want to do it, but the other guy did want to do it. They brought in this third. The third supposedly fell in love with the one. The other guy got divorced. So, you know. Tale as old as time. Too messy for yes. me. Yeah. I, I actually have friends from L.A. who live here now who have just gotten involved in that arena about a year ago and um they're going through some major hell right now um the actual anchor couple um because again what always happens is you're always attracted to one more than the other and then drama ensues and one of them is so beyond resentful it makes me a little sad because i love them both yeah and um yeah i spent an evening with him about two weeks ago and I just couldn't, because I'll crack the nut. I will. I question. That's my that's my thing. I do. I love to talk. I love to have conversation with people. I love to get in there and talk about stuff that matters, you know. Um, and the level of resentment that came out from him because this wasn't his idea. And ironically enough, the third person who is in the relationship now is more attracted to him. So Ooh. it's just this, it's just this really weird dynamic and it, um, it makes me sad because like I said, I love them both and I, I, I can sure. see they're both struggling. All right. Well, I am not like you who uh, does the whole questioning thing. Uh, I am that 
kind of reserved waspy person who never talks about themselves, which is why I'm loving today because I'm talk <laughs> I'm asking you all these questions. I want to know about dating because like I said at the top of this, I've not been on a date since 1987. Wow. Yeah, right? That's crazy. Uh, yeah, right. That was um, when your ID was printed on a stone tablet, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, no, I was number four. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was easy that way. I was five, so I can't oh, cool. really say much. There you go. Um, all right, so dating. Today, as a guy over 50, I wouldn't even know where to begin. So let's start there. Um, I know about the apps because you told me Sniffies and Grinder and all that stuff. You enlightened me on all of that. Is that where we go to find dates, or is that just a sex thing? Do, do you use dating apps? Um, I have used dating apps. Um, okay. But they didn't work for me, because it, the people who I wound up meeting and connecting with, and usually there's a coffee date, um, seem to really want a relationship and are willing to force the square peg into the round hole. And that's not me. You know, if there's if something doesn't click, if there isn't some sort of chemistry, um, which you usually know right off the bat. I mean, I'm sure yeah. you remember dating back then that you'd go on dates and there was either something that is inexplicable. It's just a chemistry thing. It's a, I don't it, I don't even right. you know what it, what is that? Do you know what that is? Like electricity happens, right? Um, OK, so stop there for a second. Is it different than the sexual electricity? I think it's everything all together, where there is that interest in, oh my God, I really find this person attractive. But then there's all these other levels that come into play. Like, they're funny. They seem intelligent. They seem to have their shit together. And because the, the, the sex thing is probably the easiest one, you know. Okay. On, on just the physical, basic, aesthetic value. Um, right. But it's when the other stuff that clicks for me that makes it, like, you know, just it brings it to a whole nother level. Well, there has to be that, that initial attraction, right, uh, which is physical. But because we're taking this f away from just sex, uh, now into dating... The, yeah, there has to be so much more. All right, so if the apps don't work for you, then how else does somebody find somebody to date? Well, again, Palm Springs represents a lot of challenges because there are so right. many people in relationships and they're open relationships and they're like, oh, my partner's okay with it. I'm like, well, eh, but I'm not. So yeah. um, All right, there well, is a higher living... demographic here of married folk. But, you know, right. I meet people at the supermarket Okay. Or, you know, if I go out to a bar and, you know, strike up a conversation with somebody. And so it's still basically the same ways to meet people. It's just that the pool seems smaller here for the single guy. Okay. Um, and it's a uh, very transient town, let me add that. So a lot yeah, of singles right. will come into town. Um, but, you know, it's hard to develop a relationship with somebody who lives in another state. Okay. So, I, well, I would imagine that it would be then the same whether you're in Palm Springs, North Dakota, or somewhere else, that you're meeting people either through an app, through, you know, like you said, at the grocery store, or when you go out to a bar and you meet somebody, or I'm sure also through friends, you know, you meet people. I don't know if if that worked, like when we were young in our 20s, yeah, you would meet someone through your friends because they were, everyone seemed to be single and mingling and whatever. But like I said, most of our friends are all in these couples or, you know, they've lost their husband or they've gotten divorced. And I, I don't know about you. I'm not dating them, but I would be wary of people that are divorced <laughs> at first, you know, like... Why'd you get divorced? Yeah, for me, it would depend on how long they were divorced. Because, you yeah. know, we've all been in relationships that, regardless of our best intention, don't work. Sure. So the fact that someone is divorced doesn't, isn't a red flag for me. Um, but, you know, again, I ask questions. I'm like, what happened? What? Yeah. You know, and it's 
what is a red flag for me is when somebody blames their partner for everything. And oh, I do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't uh, that what I'm supposed to do? I'm, I'm like, no, that's <laughs> never the case because there are two people in the relationship, right? So right. there has to be on both sides a, a level of responsibility that's taken. Sure. For yeah. uh, you know, um, for the relationship not working. And I think yeah. that's the sign of somebody who, if they're like, you know, I, I own my part of it. Um, I think to me, that's a sign of somebody who is like, oh, now I'm intrigued. Tell okay. me more. Cool. All right. So now that you've met the person or you have, you know, whatever, connected with this person and you're going to go on your date, is it different now that you're over 50? Like, what is a date? Where do you go on dates? Out to dinner, to a movie, yeah. you know, the same, same. That, that, does, well, that hasn't changed. Okay, because um, I was wondering, you yeah. know, is that a different thing? Um, I, can I tell a quick story about me when I was younger of dating? Because it's kind of funny. So I have to really go back hundreds of years. <laughs> and I had just... I had gotten back into Manhattan. I was at a party out in uh, the Hamptons, and we used to take helicopters out there at the time. And I had just gotten back, but I had to go to an opening of something. So I looked a mess, so I had a, a bandana around my hair. And I went to this opening, right? And I'm standing there, like, in some flowy linen whatever outfit. And I do know that I had on orange espadrilles, oh which is important to the story. But... <laughs> This man walked up to me and he said, I see you in waving wheat. And I was just like, okay, thanks. Great. You know, walked away from him. He come up to me again. I am envisioning you in waving wheat and blah, blah, blah. He was a painter and he wanted to paint me as somebody in Eastern Europe out in the wheat fields. And I'm like, oh, dude, does this guy look like a wheat field guy? <laughs> you know, whatever. Well, wait, I do have to ask, you did still yeah. have the babushka on your head? I think that's, yes, that's why. And that's why he pictured you <laughs> exactly. in a waving wheat field. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I did go, I sat for him. Uh, he did do this painting of me. Uh, it, it wasn't about me. It was about his painting, but he was just using me as the subject. Uh, but he made me eat borscht every time that I was... Oh, he was nuts. But he's no. a famous artist, though. Okay. Um, but anyway, long, long, long story. He, it eventually was put up in this restaurant um, in New York City over the bar, and it was a humongous painting. And so... That period of time, I was dating. So I would have people meet me at this bar, and I would just be sitting there in front of my painting. How gross is that? Oh, my God. But I know, I know, I know, I know. But you have to remember, this was back then, and all of us who were working, we would always do things like that. Like my friend Drew Watusi, this female model, did an ad for herpes and they put it on the subway you know the ads that were yes, up on the sub yeah. yeah and she used to sit underneath that <laughs> okay <laughs> that's funny it's fun i know that is i mean well, hysterical anytime we did a billboard you had to walk underneath your billboard and stand there and see if anyone noticed it, we were in our 20s we were young but anyway that was my dating thing i would have people meet me in front of my humongous picture of me with this sickle in the waving wheat. Oh all right. I know. Wow. That's all wow. the dating stories I have so I so many images in my head right now. <laughs> I'm going to have nightmares tonight. Thank and, you for that. And most of them are really oh sad. Oh, my God. All right. Let's get back to you and dating. So Although dating, I do want to see you in a babushka at some point now. Oh, sure. Uh, next week. I will wear one next week. Sweet. Uh, babushka. It was, a, it was just a, it's a babushka. bandana no, on my head. It's a babushka. Okay. If you're Russian, Italian, anywhere in Europe, it's a babushka. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So we go on our dates and we go to dinner or... Do you like going to movies on, for dates, though? I do. Because... Um, well, you just can't talk to the person. No, there's always something before. Like, you know, you'll have... You'll grab uh, coffee or a quick snack and then you go out to dinner afterwards. But it, it, what, what I like about it is it provokes conversation after the movie. Okay. A uh, conversation that. that might not have been had. 
Right. You know, where you get a different perspective on something. Sure. And I see that definitely as an older person dating because it's not all about the sex. It's not all about like, let's get home and just do it or whatever to have those conversations. And then you really get to know that person a lot better. So, okay, that's smart. Didn't think about that. Yeah. And I, um, I've is, done that forever. Yeah. You know, you know me in the arc light back in I LA? Yeah. Too. That, that was, yeah. that was my go-to date place. Right. Uh, Did they have a big picture of you and a babushka up there as well? No, but I was like the mayor Shut of up. the arc light. And when I cool. walk in the door, I'd get hugs and um, so I, I miss that place still so desperately. But anyway, Aww. that was my favorite day place. It felt so safe. Is, is there somewhere that you, at this age, do not want to go on a date? A bar. Okay. Yeah. And, and honestly, be- that is any age. If someone suggested going out to a bar on a first date, I would be like, nope, anywhere else. Yeah. Not going to a bar on a first date. Is that because of the noise or because of so many other people? It's the like noise, I would imagine- it's the people, it's the environment, it's the liquor. Because I would prefer to go out on a date with somebody who isn't buzzed. That's, okay. that's just me. And it, it always has been. Um, you know, once yeah. somebody gets a couple of drinks in them, they're a very different person. Um, and th- that's just been my experience. And I know it makes a lot of people relax and feel comfortable, but I would rather experience somebody in their uncomfortableness being them. Then yeah. I remember this one. Yeah, never mind. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. I told my waving wheat story. You can go. Okay. This one really bad date in LA. Um, we mm-hmm. went out to this really nice restaurant, and this particular person had five martinis before Ooh. the appetizers got there. Okay, that guy's got a problem. And yeah. Um, but. Good that you knew it. You found that Abs- out right absolutely. away. I was yeah. like, wow, okay. Um, yeah. So that was interesting. Okay. So on these dates, what is something that, um, like an instant, not a red flag, but the opposite, a green flag? What's a green flag for you in dating? Somebody's able to laugh at themselves. Who doesn't take themselves too seriously. Good. I love that. Um, which, again, is why I like to ask questions. Um, and sometimes I could see I'm making somebody uncomfortable, especially if you're talking about family or previous relationships. Right. Um, and I always say, if you don't want to talk about it, you don't have to. And usually they'll like, oh, no, you know what? I'm going to talk about it. Um, and that's when, it, that's, that's when something nice happens because they're, they're willing to open up. Um, yeah, and that's one of the hard things about first dates is that people tend to try to be on their best behavior. Right. And uh, I, th- that, that for me is tough. Because it's like, I'd rather see a little bit of messy. Because we know it's there for all of us, right? Well, I could see that as being a younger person, having all those walls and pre- pretenses up. But as an older person, you find that as well, that people are always doing this kind of false facade? Yeah, I tend to find it actually more now. Really? Yeah. And I think it's because, you know, a a lot of us as we get older, the walls get higher. So, you know, there's a lot of callus there. There's a lot of wound. Um, And for some people, the wall just gets higher. Um, so, well, that's kind of making me sad. I would think yeah. as you're aging, you're like, oh, you know, fuck it. This mm. is who I am. Yeah. You know? No. Yeah. And you, I mean, you know, those people because of the business you were in, um, right. who put up that pretense. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that translates into a dating relationship as well, where it's just like, I have to pretend to be anybody else but me. And, um, it, Yeah. Uh, I, you know me. I mean, I, you know, eh, it is what it is. You sort of get what you see. I don't, and it, that's taken a very long time for me to get there. Um, but I, yeah, you know, when somebody's just being genuine and when somebody's trying to either impress or, oh, totally. or deflect. Yeah. yeah. And, and for me, 
I would rather see somebody again. I, I want to see a little bit of messy. And what if someone shows up and it's all mess? You know, like I'm putting it all out on the table. Um, oh, see, that's a tough one because it depends on the mess. Like if they're willing to share and have experienced growth from that mess, it's awesome. If it's somebody yeah. who's sitting in a mud puddle of mess and just doesn't realize that they can get up and walk away from the mud puddle, it's a different, it's a different dynamic. Right. But I love it when people are willing to, to open up and share. Okay. Little, you know, it just, it just. And do you, do you find that with, well, obviously not, but I was going to ask, like, do you find that with most men over 50 who are out there dating that they appreciate someone who is genuine and just like, here I am, this is what you're getting? I would hope so. You know, I, yeah. you, you never know, especially yeah. if it's a first or just a second date. You kind of never know, you know, what their perspective is. Um, but, you know, usually after a first date, if I want to see somebody again, I said, I would, I always say I would really like to do this again if you're open to it. You know, I don't play that game. Is he going to call me first? Should I call him first? Should I? I'm like, before the night is over, if it's a, if it's a, a good experience, I'm like, do you want to do it again? And I'm okay if you don't. Because again, you know, there are, there are situations where just two people don't jive on that particular right. level. Yeah. And that's okay. It's more than okay. Okay. Um, first date. Do you sleep with people on the first date? Is it a normal thing? You know, it's um, funny. If it's somebody I'm interested in and it's an actual date date, I tend to like to wait. Yeah. If, it, if it's somebody where, who I click with. But, um, cause as I've said in the past, it always goes back to Cher or Barry Manilow. It's in his kiss. <laughs> okay. And you made fun of me wearing a babushka. Um, yeah. See that whole thing I, about I date. hope people are watching on YouTube cause just to see your face when I said that just makes yeah. me so happy. <laughs> cool. Cool. Um, cause the kissing is so hugely important. Huge. Okay. Huge. So that's what I, that's why I we, said it's in his kiss. Okay. Do we kiss on the first date? Yes. Okay. Do, is that a norm in this over 50 gay male population? It was always a norm for me. So I think for a lot of people, that's a big thing yeah. is, the, is that first kiss. And then usually on the first date, um, I think that's something that happens across the board. Okay. I would so, hope. Um, Excuse my teenage boy coming out at the moment, but I'm, again, it's been a long time for me. Um, so when you were on a date in your younger days and, you know, you were interested and like that, the sparks were happening and like, do we kiss, do we not kiss? And like all that excitement, yeah. like, is that still around? It now? is. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it is. The anticipation of that first oh, kiss yeah, that's is great. the absolute best thing yeah. about a first date for me. That's so yeah. fantastic. You that's... still get the butterflies. Okay. You're still like, is it time to move in? Should I go right. for the kiss? You know, um, yeah, that's all still there. Okay. So that is making my heart sing here because that's awesome. Like those moments were so amazing yeah. so great but i at this age i, I have to ask this too because i don't get it i mean again i've been married a really long time at this age over 50 i don't know how easy i could be getting naked in front of new people all the time you know i'd be like oh don't touch that oh no that's that back fat? No, don't touch that. You know, like, I would be so self-conscious. Yeah, and that's probably Cause, because you haven't been dating. But if yeah. you have been dating and, you know, you're on and off single, um, you know, if you've had relationships and you're out, right. um, you tend to care less. Okay, that's great. Yeah, it really yeah. is. I'm like, love me, love my love handles. That's just... <laughs> like they, it's a package deal <laughs> it's okay um, see that's why i'm like you know pumping my husband with vitamins like you are never going anywhere because i cannot <laughs> date i can't be getting naked in front of people you know i, uh, I it doesn't you, you, you just 
you know, and take this and bring it into another aspect of your life where as we age, you just don't care as much. Right? Yeah, but you just said earlier that there are a lot of guys who are still putting up these walls and these yes. pretenses. Yes. And okay, how? Oh, this is another question. I was referring question. to like body image. I, okay. I think you tend to care less. Speaking of body image, and we have talked about this on the podcast before, there are certain men over the age of 50, 60, and 70 that we all have seen the ones who are wearing three sets of Spanx and, you know, their clothes that are appropriate for a 23-year-old and the, the, you know, crazy dye dripping off their faces like Giuliani. Have you ever experienced that where someone starts peeling off their Spanx or anything like that? Because that would be awesome. Fortunately, no. Okay, good. I just, that would be like such a great... And it's interesting because it would be a little what's the word i'm looking for it's not like that it would be a lie but i don't know to pop off a girdle and all of a sudden you know <laughs> have love handles is right. misrepresentation i'm going right. to say and because i would have enjoyed the person with the love handles if i enjoyed the person as opposed well, yeah. to seeing him pull off a pair of spanks and it's like one of those cartoons where it's like, boing! <laughs> yeah. You mean like when it, I take off my Spanx? Um, I would imagine, though, that you would already have sussed this guy out, you know, it, over dinner or over coffee and go like, oh, yeah, this guy is full of pretense and or pretension or whatever it is and not made that next step. I was just wondering it because, I don't know. Just and again, if it is somebody it. I'm interested in, I'm more than happy to wait till like... A yeah. couple of dates to actually sleep together because it again it's one of those you know, like I said the first kiss that anticipation yeah there's also something that builds with that there's an excitement of like you know when you actually do it I'm so, so freaking old fashioned in regard to some things it's scary sometimes well no that I mean it's it's great to know that that is still you know out there in the dating world at this age. Um, do you think at this age you also are more, ex well, I think you just said this, though, that you're more accepting of somebody's body faults yeah. or you're not looking at someone and going like, oh, I'm going, I want to date that guy because he's got perfect abs. Oh, like, I, I, that's not anything, right? No, it's ironic. I never really wanted to date somebody with perfect abs. Why not? I, it just, I don't have a type. Like uh -huh. I, I have dated every ethnic background, every I mean, I, it just across the board, it usually just depends on the person and something clicking. So I don't have a type going into anything. Um, but somebody with the perfect body, uh, this is going to be a, a, a blanket stereotype, and I don't mean it to be, but um, there's either a, a, a level of insecurity that they feel they have to, to, to maintain that, or maybe a narcissism that never attractive somebody who wants to spend three hours a day at a gym right and not eat a piece of pizza or a roll at dinner and you know kudos to kudos to them because i don't yeah. have that kind of restraint <laughs> if i see right. bread and butter it's i'm going in but um yeah i don't mean that to sound as judgmental as it did but i couldn't find any other words no i, I just, don't think it's I just judgmental. don't want that i i've I never been attracted to that perfect body Right. There are, though, in this gay population over 50, there are these subsets that only kind of date within their subset, right? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, there's the the bears who are into bears and, you know, I don't know all the subsets because I'm... Cloistered I'm away with your... Yes. <laughs> Living this... <laughs> really sad And they both existence. ring the bells at five o'clock and six o'clock, so... We do. Yeah. Um, but but you do find that, that there are these subsets that only date yeah. their, you know, these particular yeah. types, which is, you know, fine, as long as you know that. And the muscle um, guys tend to date the muscle guys anyway, which I've never been, so. Yeah. You know. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So, now, you mentioned earlier that you're not dating to find a relationship. But there are guys that are dating to find relationships. Um, Let me 
if that was the if that was the implication you got, I got to rephrase that. I am dating to have a relationship. I would love to have a relationship, but it's going to be with somebody I click with as opposed to just somebody who happens to be there. Forcing it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, But there are a number of guys out there dating who are just, I need to be in a relationship. There are those relationship guys. I I know them. Um, And do you find them out in the dating world as well? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, they've always been there. And, you know, they always will because there are people who need to have somebody. And that's awesome. Um, but yeah, I would just, I, I kind of, if, if I'm going to put that much effort into something, I want it to be somebody who there's a little bit of magic with a little bit of, I like romance. I like, I thought you were going to start singing Barry Manilow's magic song. Cause then I would have to have, could, I mean, could it be, no, I, I was actually going to break out into a song from beauty and the beast. That's where I was going with that one. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Sweet. Um, so, but there are guys out there, especially with what we heard from the AARP, that there are so many single men over the age of 45, as they say. Uh, there's a ton of guys out there who don't want to be in relationships. Absolutely. They're, they feel like they're done. Because I've gone on dates with, you know, th- them as well. And they're just like, yeah, I, do, I have no desire to be in a relationship. So are they, but they, but they date. So yes. are they, are they just like dating all kinds of guys? Do they just like the experience of dates? I don't, I'm not understanding. Like if you don't want to be in a relationship, why are you out there dating? It's like being at a buffet where you got to sample a little bit of everything. But isn't, isn't that then just go to one of the sex apps and just have sex with people? Or is it, See, I don't understand. See, with the sex apps, um, there is a kamikaze nature to it, where it is what it is, you're in, you're out. Um, but I do think, <laughs> I do think people... It's just so not my world, I just don't care. <laughs> I do think there are people who want companionship or, you know, to make a connection with another human being, they just don't want to be in a relationship with them. Yeah. And that's more than okay. Because believe me, as some, you know, somebody who's been single for a, a while now, I think my last substantial relationship was right before COVID, um, I can understand that because you get a little tired, you know, of just like, yeah. here we go again. You know, and you, it, it's, um, it could be exhausting. So I can understand people who are like, you know what, I'm just going to date, keep it casual and sort of be the bee and bounce around to different flowers and pollinate everywhere. Do you like the dating experience? It's a 50-50 split. When it's a good date, it's great. When it's a bad date, it's not so great. But, but can you just chalk it up to, well, at least I got out and I did something? Absolutely. Because, you know, yeah. my, my instinct is to go, no, I'm, I'm not going to bother. Yeah. That's, that's, that's where I want to go. So I can totally understand why people just get fed up with it. But um, I push myself. Because I know, I know I am, I, this is just me, I am better when I'm coupled. You know, it gets you out of yourself. Yeah. Um, It's always a wonderful thing to do something for someone else, which I love to do. Um, So yeah, I, that's just me. That's, that's, that's what I want. So I'm going to keep going. Okay. Have you experienced some of those serial daters who are just out dating, yes. no relationship, no, we're not going uh-huh. farther than this? Yeah. So how long do the dates, like, do you date for a month and then he moves on? Do you, well, like... You, so usually, because again, I ask questions. Uh-huh. Um, after the first or second date, I sort of like to know so, where somebody's coming from. So what are your thoughts on relationships? What are your thoughts on, you know... What do you, what are you looking for? And more often than not, people will let you know. Because there are some people who I've dated who said, you know, if I'm going to be in a relationship, it's going to be in an open relationship. And then for me, it's like, oh, that's mm-hmm. awesome. We're just going to be friends. Yeah. Or if it's somebody who's like, I'm not into a relationship. That's awesome. 
it gives me the opportunity to tell them what it is I want and then say, so let's just be friends because that is right. absolutely fine with me. All right. That's a very mature thing. Uh, do you find that that happens more now at this age than it did younger where someone says, this is what I'm looking for up front? I prod. So, okay. <laughs> I get to it. it I, I, I yeah. get there. Because again, I don't want to be wasting my time and I don't want to be wasting somebody else's time. So probably since my mid to late thirties, when I finally became a little bit more healthy in regard to relationships, because I was that mm -hmm. person who bounced from relationship to relationship, because I felt finding someone else who fulfilled me would make me whole. And so big reason why they never worked, or I would always find somebody who was incredibly dysfunctional and needed me. Um, which again, that's why it didn't work. <laughs> so, um, yeah. well, I'm sure those people are still out there, right? The, like, have you been on a date where like, you're like, whoa, this is a really dysfunctional person yeah. and I need to end this immediately. Yeah. Well, I don't end it immediately, but I, I, I like, I like to make the person feel comfortable in their dysfunction and not, it's funny. I just had this conversation with somebody maybe four or five days ago who shared something with me and you could tell he felt he was really hesitant to talk about it and i said to him to try and make it easier for him to share i said you know what we all experience shame and that's the problem with it if we keep it it just makes it worse I said if you share it you open the closet and you turn on the light and you realize the boogeyman's not there. And he was like, wow, thank you for allowing me the space to share this. And it was, it was a really great moment, I think, for both of us. Cool. Um, and he was like, you're absolutely right. I feel ashamed of this and I know I shouldn't. Right. You know, I'm a grown man. <laughs> Why would I be ashamed of this particular because you're human because we we all do we all do it it's it's pushing through that shame and going oh you know what yeah this is me right okay sure great um all right so dating anything else i'm missing on, on dating after 50 uh i guess it's not really all that different it's than not. dating as a younger person yeah it's really right? not um, you know and that's the thing about we have to remember as we age as well things are still the same. Yeah. Our emotions, our reactions to them, those feelings, again, of that anticipation of the first kiss. I'm going to keep going back to that because it's such an awesome thing. Yeah. If we allow that to be, as opposed to be afraid of it and going, oh, I don't want that. Um, I'm, I'm so glad that that's still yeah. out there. It's, it's, um, it, 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 it makes me so happy. That, sweet. Yeah. Um, you know, one of my favorite segments that we do on our show is called the savage side eye and this is the moment where we get to you know give a little side eye to somebody that's bugging your bugging us or doing something we don't like but as long as we're talking about dating and all your dating experiences i'd love you to sh throw a little shade over uh onto a date that you might have had a little side do you have a side eye that you could kind of no names, please. Oh, no but names. But, like a really but, bad date. Oddly, I would love oddly to enough, hear this is something that has happened throughout the years, regardless of age. Okay. And still continues to. Um, men out there, if you're on a date with somebody, focus. Stay engaged in that moment. Don't be the little doggy sitting in the window, the bobblehead, where you know you get whiplash as other people walk by that you're cruising while you're sitting there with somebody else. Uh, yeah. Or, here's a big one, and this is obviously something that's recent, don't open Grindr or Scruff on a date. It's Are so you kidding? tacky! It is so tacky! Seriously? No, I'm, I am, it, it has happened a couple of times. And, you know, I, I have OCD, I, so I like to sit with my back to a wall. So yeah. usually if I'm out with somebody, I have to get up and go behind them if I need to go to the bathroom. And there have been a number of instances where I come back to the table and they're on their phone and oh, no. they have grinder or scruff open. And <laughs> oh, I no. call them out. Dude, I call oh. them out. I'm like, dude, really? 
And he's like, well, I had a notification and I always take my phone out because it's grinder or scruff. You get notifications all the time. And I like go, so do I, you know what? I didn't open it because I'm here with you. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's so I crazy. would be livid. Yeah. I'm not I'm livid. It, it makes me laugh. I'm like, wow. are you serious? Like, you can't well, devote an hour and a half for two hours and stay focused. Even when somebody gets up to go to the bathroom. Okay, but luckily <laughs> for you, that is the big light on that red flag. Oh, yeah. Of like, yeah, no, this guy is not worth no. dating. You know, and then you know, usually it's oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, you know what? It's all good. It's all good. I don't. I honestly don't care. I just find it fascinating. Yeah, that you can't stay focused on a single person, and I get it. Our phones have become like a part of our our body. Yeah, and you know, open Facebook. Why are you <laughs> under a scrub? Well, if you why do you have to be phone? on your phone at all? Um, I have done you that when somebody, bathroom, when, when somebody gets up and goes to the bathroom, I'll, I'll, I'll open my phone and check Facebook uh, or no. check a message. Or, but no. as soon as I see him coming back, phone goes away. But still, to me, if I saw that, I'd be like, oh, he is on Scruff or Grindr or whatever those are. You know, um, no. I, like uh, when I was dating in the dark ages, we didn't have phones. We didn't have all that yeah. stuff. But I do know that if that attention wasn't on me, no, we're done here. Um, yeah, and again, it's for a short period of time. I don't think right? you really That's need to open thing. grind or scruff. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, yeah, let's throw some uh, <laughs> side eye over it. All of, I'm shocked that you men are out there on a date, also on a sex app. Come on, I show know. some respect, not only for yourself, but definitely for the person you're with. Um, well, we can't. <laughs> Just talk negative. Uh, we've also started a really great segment for our show, which is the Happy Gay Moment of the Week. So, to round out those bad experiences of dates, tell us a happy date experience or a happy thing that happens when you are dating. I think one of my favorite dating experiences, because it was like a two-week stint, um, took place in Amsterdam, and it sort of. Like, wait, 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 wait! It was a two-week date. Yeah, pretty much it became that. A first night, first date. Yeah. Turned into two weeks. It was crazy. Spent the entire how old were time you? with him. How, how old were you? Forty-ish. Wow. Yeah, it was when the okay. gay games were in Amsterdam. So, no, okay. maybe thirty-six or thirty-eight. Just um, not 20. So okay. it, was, it was opening ceremonies of the games. And Team Montreal was right next to us. And there was this guy who was, happened to be there. And we made eye contact, um, exchanged smiles. And then as we were going into the stadium, he came over and we started chatting. And for the next two weeks, it was like that stuff that movies are written about. And like I said, I love romance. Right. It was it was crazy. And let me tell please, you, there were a ton of tears on that last day. Well, please day, tell which me that he didn't even me. speak English. He was French Canadian and he spoke English he, very well. Oh shoot. That would have been so great that look, we didn't But even, he had a French it accent. Just, it was awesome. Yeah. I mean, it okay. really was. We did uh, the gondola rides and museums and just walked the streets at night and holding hands and it was Oh my God, it was just absolutely magic. And, you know, we tried to, he came to LA a couple of times. I went to Montreal, but that's, that's a tough long distance one. Yeah. Um, but still to this day, you know, one of the, one of the sweetest men I've ever met. Um, and it was, it was, it was everything that you would want a dating experience to be, even though it was short lived, it just made me, it filled me up. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that yeah. with us. Um, and thank you for all of your dating words of wisdom and knowledge. Um, I've learned so much. <laughs> <laughs> I now, every time I go out to dinner, and if I see someone go up to the bathroom and some other guy get in his phone, I'm going to like throw some real side eye over Just get up like, and walk behind him and see if he's on it and say, do you really need to be on that right off, now? <laughs> right? Yeah, that's going to be my whole thing now. So watch out, people. Um, awesome. Uh, so that was great. Thanks for 
enlightening me on the world of dating over 50. I'm going um, to throw you under the bus, though, before we're okay. done. Okay, go right ahead. What's your happiest dating experience? Oh, yes, yes. I, got, well, I haven't I got thought about it. Um, I would imagine it's something with my husband. Nice. Was that because I would assume that magic was there when you guys first met and right that yeah. first anticipation of that first kiss and all that fun stuff. Yeah, all of that stuff yeah. was, you know. But I, I did. I was a very hard person to date. I know that. Um, I made people work. Um, you know, like. To get a piece of this, it took a really long time. And, and again, I'm talking like a hundred years ago, right? But I was the guy in the billboard. So I did have to make people work for it. You know, I didn't give it away. Um, even my husband had to really work hard. But I would imagine, I mean, we've had, we, since being married, since being together, um, we have had some um, lovely lovely magical evenings together i don't really consider them dating but there are so many memories where it's like oh you know quick one when we were in hawaii together um before anyone could ever get married and we kind of were on a beach under the stars and we gave rings to each other uh -huh. you know that was like a lovely evening uh committing to each other yeah. in 1980 something you know like wasn't even heard of, but we, you know, so yeah, we had a lovely, lovely, magical evenings, but in my head, they weren't dates because he was my guy and we weren't dating anymore. Um, anyway, it's not about me. It's about dating after 50. Have we learned everything we need to know, Michael? Oh, or is God, there anything no, else? No, no, good. Cause you know what? There is no, cause you know, I think if you heard me, I kept saying for me. Yeah. Cause there is right. no, there is no formula to dating. It's, it's, it's unique to the individuals who are involved in it. And um, I don't think there is a right or wrong way. And that's why when the magic happens, it's so great. Because, you know, awesome. it takes a lot to click. So all of our amazing listeners out there, or those of you that are watching us, um, and I'm sorry about that. Um, we want to hear about your magical moments. You know, tell us all of your most amazing dating experiences if you are in, out there dating after 50, or tell us some of your horrible experiences, because I would love to hear those as well. Uh, Michael, how can they do that? You guys could reach us through email at no 2 it at gmail.com, and it's the number two. So no, the number two, gazeaboutit at gmail.com. You could hit us up on Facebook with the same moniker, no 2 it. Um, and we are also on Instagram and TikTok. And please go to YouTube and check out our YouTube channel and like and subscribe. And that is, you could also find us at no 2 Ks about it. So come on, join the conversation. We want to hear from you guys. We appreciate we your listening. You guys. We love it when we get comments. Um, yeah, you guys and your comments are amazing. So even even when they're that. shady. Shadier the better, yeah. especially when the shade is being thrown over at Michael. Please send more of those emails because I love reading those. Oh, I do too. Um, <laughs> oh my God, it fills my heart. <laughs> and definitely find us on YouTube and subscribe to our channel because um, we, we want to keep this going and this conversation of the over 50 gay male. Keep that going. Uh, so let us know what you'd like to, us to talk about. Um, whatever. We're here to do that. So, great. Thank you very much, Michael. And until next time. Until next time. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Get out there and make that magic. Make some date in life happen. Yeah. Come on. Bring it on. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you'd like to explore the various and varied relationships of those of us gay men over 50, click like and subscribe so you too can join our conversation.